A tough new law goes into effect this week in the nation's gang capital, Los Angeles. Identified members of the notorious 18th Street Gang will not be allowed to appear together in public, even to stand together in their own front yards. The city is targeting the 18th Street Gang because it is one of the nation's largest and fastest growing gangs. The federal government has also been cracking down, deporting gang members convicted of crimes. But as ABC's Anderson Cooper reports, the deportations are only exporting the problem. Far from the streets of Los Angeles, in a squalid San Salvador slum, the 18th Street gang has found another member. His name is Little Mousy. He's only nine years old. But today, he's getting his first tattoo. Welcome to the new El Salvador. The civil war is long over, but the gang war has just begun. San Salvador today seems a lot like Los Angeles. You cruise through streets of fast food, fancy cars, and radios blasting the oldies. Everywhere you look, American culture stares back. But by deporting what Salvadoran officials say are at least 3,000 gang members to the country of their birth, the U.S. has also been exporting a darker side of its culture. The deportees, most of whom grew up in Los Angeles, return to a country they barely know. The gang life they learned in the U.S. is the one thing that gives them some status. Because you've been to L.A., people people look up to you, they give you respect? Yeah, you know, because, you know, you know what's up, you know, you, you've been through a lot of stuff, you know, that sometimes they haven't been through, you know, and so they look up to you. Sloppy was 12 when he joined L.A.'s 18th Street gang. Upon returning to El Salvador, he formed a new gang clique with Nasty, a deported drug dealer. Together, they've recruited a half dozen young Salvadorans eager to join something hardcore, something American. The gang has become a family of sorts, one they can't imagine living without. In the slums, there's always someone eager to belong. Carlos is only 14, but he's about to be initiated into Mara Salvatrucha, 18th Street's biggest rival gang. The initiation is called a jump-in. It's a beating by the gang that's meant to test Carlos's toughness. As night falls, the gang gathers. Soon, the beating begins. Afterwards, Carlos is stunned but happy. He passed the test. His reward is a few tokes on a joint and some cheap liquor. He now belongs, and his life will never be the same. In El Salvador, it's believed there are now some 20,000 young Salvadorans who have become gang members. You see them swaggering through slums, dressed in Nikes and baseball hats, robbing, selling drugs, stealing cars. Most wind up dead or in jail. Some become drug addicts and end up begging in the streets. With 60% of people here living in poverty and opportunities few, the police and juvenile courts can't seem to handle the problem. The gangs just keep on growing. Some kids do get out. Rosa was shot and paralyzed by a rival gang member. Her gang then abandoned her. The deportees, she says, bring nothing but disgrace. They come here, she says, and recruit and tell us the rules from L.A., but in the end, we're the ones who suffer. But for every one who leaves a gang, there are two or three to take their place. A whole generation in El Salvador has come of age enamored with those deported from the U.S., enamored with this violent side of American culture. Anderson Cooper. ABC News, San Salvador.